Roberts DIY home theater PC build, the one he built on the Intel Atom NVIDIA Ion CPU graphics combo, low power, quiet. We get a lot of requests for a review of Dell Xeno. It's a $249 eight by eight inch compact PC powered by AMD Athlon X2, or at the very top of the line, uh, AMD's Neo X2 CPUs. This is the box itself. Hey. Don't ask me about the lid yet. Compact. Tell I them won't. about the processor. <laughs> Shall I tell them what the uh, test unit we have came with? Absolutely. Uh, apparently, it's an X2 3250E processor. It's a 1.5 gigahertz dual core, low power processor. Always nice with one megabyte of cache. Uh, think of it basically as something faster than the Atom that I built, but slower than, say, a high end Intel dual core. And it added $65 to the base price. Now, the AMD Neo X2 6850E is the fastest option available. It adds $110 to the base price and a fair amount of oomph for things like video transcoding or basic gaming, even. Yeah, the Xeno uh, comes uh, in black for free, Ooh. caps with colors or patterns from 15 or 30 bucks. There are lots and lots of pretty shiny user upgradable lids. Nice. So I take it they give you plenty of options if you're into just getting all stylish with different colors. You with would imagine the things. drapes. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's got lots of shiny candy like colors. Um, two gigabytes of RAM, Windows 7 Home Premium is standard at that 249 level. Our box came with four gigabytes of RAM. That's a $79 upgrade. I think you can get away with two gigabytes for home theater PC. Ethernet only is a standard, an 802.11 B or G card is a $25 upgrade, a BGN card runs $45. You notice as you start adding things, things start getting more expensive, it's right? It's true. I'm all about Ethernet, though, for any kind of 1080p video. Right. I haven't yet to see any wireless really do high density video really well yet, so. This is true. Ethernet rules. <laughs> ATI's Radeon HD 3200 graphics are standard, should handle HD video playback just fine, it's like for Blu-rays. Our box had the optional Radeon HD 4330, that adds $75 to the price and should handle games more gracefully. Quick nice. tip, make sure you download the latest drivers direct from ATI's website. Our testbed had some dated drivers and upgrading them um, kind of helped things along a little bit. Also, ATI, we need to talk about where you put the overscan control in your in your drivers, that's just a nightmare. We're, uh, we're, we'll, we'll talk the, about that more. The pain. Later, but, <laughs> but yeah, it's, they are buried. Uh, and to finish off the convig options, which are incredible, right? You can basically, you can easily quadruple the base price of the system, I think, especially if you buy a monitor. What kind um, of stuff, though? Oh, XFi audio, uh, like audio upgrades. Uh, there's an optional Hophog Win TV recorder, the usual array of service plans, uh, hard drives. This testbed has a 500 gigabyte hard drive. That's a $65 upgrade. The max is a one terabyte drive. And uh, there's an optional Blu-ray drive. Ours is a DVD drive. Um, it's 100 bucks to upgrade to a Blu-ray drive. That's a good uh, price for a Blu-ray internal slim drive, at least. Yeah. I paid about 100 and 60 or 70 bucks for the one I put in my home theater PC, which I'm finding I hardly use the darn drive. <laughs> no, oh, never mind. And that, that, that may be legit. If you're not streaming, or excuse me, if you're not playing Blu-rays, you don't need to upgrade to that drive. Uh, well, I should put it, this unit with the, with the optional uh, uh, Blu-ray dong, Blu-ray, <laughs> the optional Bluetooth dongle, keyboard and mouse was, uh, I think, $608. Our model didn't have, again, that, that optional $100 Blu-ray drive that uh, reads and writes DVDs. I'm pretty sure the cheapest Blu-ray configuration comes in at $597 or 529 with the $68 discount that was around when we were on Dell's site. There's a pretty amazing or ridiculous array of options. Um, again, the base version that has the stripped-down processor and the, the, the base processor and 2 gigabytes of RAM and Windows 7 uh, is $240. It's a good entry price, okay, but yeah. enough of the specs. How did you? How was it usability-wise? Okay, getting your home theater PC on with the onboard HDMI port was pretty easy once I sorted out. Or actually, I should say Roger actually helped us find the secret hidden scaling uh, uh, overscan scaling. ATI control. overscan controls are buried. We need to talk about that ATI. <laughs> okay. uh, I'd really like to see a Windows Media Center remote option on the, all of the options I could find for this thing. That was the one thing that wasn't in there. Um, I used the keyboard to control it for my testing and played around with some little totally. controllers that we had around uh, Windows. Media Center remotes. Once the graphics drivers are updated, really solid. Um, Blu-ray playback with Total Media uh, Theater, flawless. I used an external Blu-ray drive for that. Oh, Looked nice. absolutely gorgeous. Uh, 720p QuickTime trailers, no problem. Um, at least once they completed downloading, because downloading actually uses a huge percentage of the CPU. <laughs> like you laugh, but it, <laughs> you know, you start to realize exactly how much processing power uh, this takes. 1080p QuickTime stuttered some. Um, QuickTime and, and HD Flash can be kind of hard on a low-power PC. Um, I was impressed, but again, one of the things is if you want some more powerful options on this, 
um, you are going to spend more money. All right, I'm going to give it a thumbs up. If you don't want to build your own home theater PC, it's definitely an option that should be on your list. I'm going to do some more playing around with audio output on this as we get an updated receiver in here because I'm in I'm between receivers. I noticed when you loaded up Windows Media Center, though, boom, it popped yeah. up pretty quick. So I, this, to me, just subjectively feels a little bit quicker than my Atom setup. I would say it, it's the the CPU is definitely faster than the Atom setup, and the it's got essentially it has a discrete desktop graphics chip. Can we there. overclock it? I'll we'll, overclock my Atom. We'll <laughs> play around with that later on. <laughs>